Um, so yeah, that went around. That went along good. Um, there was a guy that showed up. We got there at, what time did you get there? About three o'clock. Yeah, and another guy showed up this morning, apparently. Yeah, it was after us. Because he wasn't there when we got here, but. So at seven, Donna ran in and checked in, and the guy said, yeah, pull right into the dock. And that guy that was sitting out in the street just acted like he was totally furious at us. I mean, we scaled when we first, before we went into the dock, he had a scale, and I backed in the dock, and then I pulled back around, scaled again, and Donna ran in to get the paperwork, and that guy was sitting right <laughs> across from me on the street, and he was just giving me stink eye like you wouldn't believe. It was just crazy. It was like, man, you know, it's first come, first serve there, so. If you don't go in when they open, then you have to wait. Yeah, I mean, if you park there overnight, I don't care who gets there before us. I'm not gonna sit and wait for other people to get out of bed and get around to going in there at, you know, 7, 30, 8 o'clock. That's not our problem. No, well, it said our appointment was at 7. When I called the guy yesterday, he said they start loading at 7, 30. Yeah. So I got up at 7 o'clock, and I got in there about 7, 15. That guy could have done the same thing. Yeah. I mean, they didn't say that they opened at 7.30. They just don't start loading until 7.30. But they were getting there at, like, what, quarter to 7. Yeah, so, well, I didn't even know. I didn't even know because I parked on the side. And he apparently parked in the street in the front. So I didn't even know he was there until I walked around the building and saw him there. But I didn't know he already went in. And I was there first anyways. Oh. Yeah, he was angry. that last night but um, we got in there at 8 o'clock um, to get that other load unloaded there and um, we was in far west basically all good Utah is what it is we was at far west there at a grocery warehouse we got in at 8 he did get us in early got us right into a dock but then we sat there until like quarter after 9 before the lumper came out to get the lumper money which you know I wasn't really no big deal because our appointment went until 9 anyway so he comes out and gets the money, and as soon as he went inside, he immediately got into the trailer. I could feel him in there bouncing, and then nothing for like 45 minutes. And then they get some more, and then nothing for like 45 minutes. We ended up getting out of there about 9.30 or 12.30, which is, you know, what, three hours? That's not terrible in a grocery warehouse, three hours. No. Um, and I got three and a half hours of sleep, so I'm pretty yeah. happy about it. Um, so yeah, we should be about 42,000 pounds once we get everything done, which we should be more than good at that, so. Unless it's just been a fiasco. We got loaded in Rupert, as you know, and we went down to Rigby. So we got loaded in Rupert, and we was really front heavy there. But we got 10,000 pounds added on over in Rigby. After three hours. Yeah. <laughs> they only put in like, um, four pallets and we sat there for about three and a half hours for them four pallets so frustrating watching trucks come and go and that's all we had but anyway finally got loaded went over and scale and of course what were we 13,240 yeah 13.3 to start then we got down to 13.240 yeah, it was at 13,240, I think, on the steers. Keep in mind, we're only like 76,000 gross, so. So we were like 13,240 on the steers. We thought we had the tandem slid all the way forward, but we ended up eking out one more hole. <laughs> oh, man. We ended up getting it all the way, I mean, the tandems are slammed as far forward as they'll go. They're up against the stops. Station ahead. And we are 13,180 pounds, finally. Uh, but that was only by having Donna go in the back and set Claire back in the back of the sleeper. It's the only way we could get it down that low. Alright, so I did call the shop because it's getting really old, honestly. It's getting really old with the weights. Gotta admit that. We are constantly over on our steers, constantly. Anything over about 38,000 pounds, and we're, you know, we're running like 3 eighths to 5 eighths tank of fuel to get all the way from Utah clear back to Iowa and it's just getting really frustrating so I called talk to the shop he's gonna 
talk to one of the other guys and see about either moving the fifth wheel back because this one is a permanent mounted one. You can't slide it on your own. Um, that or um, sliding our tanks back even to see if we can get some weight transferred to the drives to get them off the steers. Hopefully we can get that straightened out. Somebody can get it straightened out because I'm really tired. Um, I mean, the other day from Salt Lake City to Musk or back to Iowa, did we even go to Iowa or did we go to Nebraska with that? Yeah, we had to fill up three times yeah. because we could only run like three eighths half tank of fuel. That was it. Um, so yeah, we'll see what happens. Now here we are running into weather again. So I'm hoping it just stays rain and we didn't just kick ourselves by going this way. It's 40 degrees, so it should stay rain. Hey guys, I'm gonna try to talk to you while we're doing this. Um, as you can see, it was snowing in Utah, and we got to Wyoming, and the roads were clear. We got to Wyoming, and of course, the roads are crap, and they got a chain law in effect. So, We're putting on our jeans. Along with everybody else, as you can see. We already got one side looped. And I know I've seen, uh, I've seen people hook them without moving but for us it's just easier to slide your hooks under they kind of leave slack in the front slide my hooks up And then just basically drive over the chain. Yeah. I keep them just touching the ground in the back. Slack in the front. Donna will drive forward. And then it's just, it's just easier to hook them. Or I think it is. Each their own on this though. can't see much of us if anything at all um, we got our chains on what happened was I don't know why this the, the chains that we had on this truck were for super, super singles I don't know what good that does us um, so I had to take all those so we took both of those chains off and then had to take all the chains off the chain rack which consisted of like six to find two that were for singles all right so we got those on then the key that we had fit one set of the chains but when it fit the other set of chains so I had to kind of make shift a wrench to get them locked down and hopefully they stay on now um, and then I went to kick on my differential lock and we got an air leak in it so we can't kick on the differential so that's where we're at um, we're getting ready to go up over, what is it, Three Sisters? Three Sisters Mountains now. They still got the chain law in effect, so 
I'm not going to stay on here. So just want to get you guys an update. Um, but this will be it for the night. Um, I'm going to shut it down now.